Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Speak of the Devils. I'm your host Josh Coughlin. We've had an extraordinary year this, thus far with many entertaining episodes from football to music to food. Our continued growth of the club has always trying to incorporate a little bit of everything, such as creating and acting out scripts, editing videos, and interviewing special guests has made it all possible. The club members have to put in grueling work and effort to be able to go out into the community to obtain knowledge about the theme or subject which the episodes are about, planning and performing complex skits and editing large files of footage filmed. Hopefully, tonight, our episode that was once again put together by a hard-working team will bring you viewers some new knowledge about our analyzed topic and also a few laughs as well. This episode is technology themed, hooray! Yes, you know the technology is pretty broad and something all of you have been informed a little bit about or definitely, yes, definitely used in the past. However, our episode today will be going more in depth and, very, and possibly provide you with some new understanding of how it is being used in numerous fashions in society today and the basics of how it works. It is important that we are grateful and remain interested in things that we seemingly take for granted too often. Technology development over the last 40 years has been enormous and has made every single human being's lives easier and entertaining. So before you pick up your cell phone to check another text, think about who made it and why it is able to do the variety of things that it does, such as alerting you that someone from miles away is trying to contact you. In specifics to our episode, we will be looking at how the utilization of technology has affected the growth of education at Burlington High School and what technology is essentially broken down into simplified terms. The man just right for the job, with a mind adapted to and filled with information about technology, is BHS help desk teacher Leroy Wong. He has been the technology teacher at BHS for two years, teaching a multitude of classes and assisting anyone who is in dire need of help with their iPad or other devices. To begin, we have a new Devils on the Street with footage of the BHS Wind Ensemble performing in Bellingham along with some interviews with some concert participants to see what their experience was like. Jenna Casey and Ethan Rousseau spoke with band teacher Mr. Buxbaum. Let's have a look. music. Now let's move over to another installation of Nick's Picks featuring Nick Conley discussing the latest in film, television, and gaming. Nick has recently taken a look into the video game Cuphead. Cuphead is a unique side-scrolling two-player action game that takes gamers back to the classic cartoon talkie era of the 1930s as Cuphead and Mugman take a, a deal with the devil. All hand-drawn to look just like the real deal, originally released on the Xbox One in 2016, Cuphead will be ported over to the Nintendo Switch on Thursday, April 18th. Now let's get into our episode. Cuphead is a video game developed by Studio MDHR and follows the 1940s style Golden Boys, Cuphead and Mugman, who gamble their freedom away and have to defeat monsters so that they won't die. This game is apparently so hard that the tutorial is enough to challenge the most hardened of gamers. Fight any number of memorable characters such as Stephen King, Ariel, The Living Tombstone, Last Week's Harvest, The Moon, This Backstroking Crab, Piranha Plant, and James Cameron's Titanic. Fated to release September 29th of 2017, Cuphead was turning out to be a fun and memorable experience for everyone, giving Xbox, Microsoft, and Steam users the chance to relive the days of film reels and moving your body in ways it was absolutely not supposed to. Not much later, Cuphead made its debut onto Macintosh devices, finally allowing Apple users to get their hands on this masterpiece, and scaring Apple people like this one because cannibalism. The gravy train didn't end there though, for they skyrimmed this game to more consoles and the Switch version is fated to release April 19th of this year. 
but never you fear, 4 DLC is here. Adding more story and bosses and even a new playable character to the franchise named Miss Chalice, who can apparently double jump. Cuphead is a unique and entertaining game that brings a whole new meaning to the word bullet hell. Seriously, this game is infuriating. I'd have to give this game a 9.3 out of 10 for its stunning visuals and unique level designs, but I'm deducting 0.7 from the score because I'm salty. This has been Nick's Picks. Thank you for listening. I've heard of it. Yeah. Welcome back. I'm now honored to introduce our guest to the stage, Leroy Wong. It's very nice to see you, sir, and get some insight on what another year at BHS has been like for you in growing technology and students' minds about it. Good to see you, Josh, and uh, thank you to uh, BCAT for um, having me. Um, worked with you and many other students, um, you know, the past few years here at uh, BCAT, and uh, it's always been super helpful just with the things that you've done uh, for the help desk program and just for the school in general. Of course, we're glad to have you. All right, Mr. Long, let's start with getting to know you a little bit more. How did you come to love technology? Were you just naturally interested and talented and fascinated by it from a young age, or? Um, I would say that's probably correct. Um, so um, I grew up uh, in, in uh, rural North Carolina, actually. Oh, wow. And so my father, I guess, was kind of an audiophile. So someone that was really into just um, audio equipment and just all sorts of different technology. So I remember just as a young age, um, he would bring different things home, you know, different pieces of technology. So like when CD players came out and, you know, for you guys it's like, what's a CD? Or you might have some vague <laughs> recollection of what a CD is. Um, he would just bring different things um, into the household. Um, the laser disc player, which I guess was sort of a precursor to like DVDs, again, something that's mm -hmm. kind of almost on the way out. Um, so just, you know, all sorts of different things like that. And so I was one of those kids that had like an Atari 2600, which is like an old classic console. Um, had an Atari 800 computer, and um, just you know, al always was interested in technology. Had like an Apple IIc. I could probably go on and on listing the different computers I had. Um, so yeah, just kind of grew up with it. Always had it kind of as a hobby, just something that I did um, as a fun thing that I just really enjoyed. And I think that's yeah. kind of like the origins of my interest yeah. in technology. Awesome. So how would you say that your knowledge of technology has influenced your career path over the years? Um, I would say it's really influenced it in, in a number of ways. So uh, just being someone that really enjoys technology, I just like to read a lot about it. Um, so, you know, again, starting uh, at a young age, um, back when I guess people bought print magazines <laughs> or books or things like that, um, you know, about technology. I would just kind of like d devour those things. And so, you know, mm -hmm. luckily had parents that were like, okay, he seems to like this, so, you know, let's, um, you know, get him these different things. And so, um, in, in my learning of technology over time, uh, I, I feel like m most of what I know is really self taught. Um, oh, wow. As far as uh, college, I really only took one course <laughs> that was technically like kind of a computer science course. Um, so, yeah, that was the kind of funny thing about when I was in college. Um, you know, just wasn't really sure if I was going to be cut out to um, be like on a hard computer science or engineering track. So actually majored in psychology, <laughs> of really? all things. Yeah, so I don't really kind of use that necessarily. But um, at the same time, I guess just always have kept um, up to date with just learning uh, things and technology because it was an in interest of mine. And I guess, um, you know, you just never know where that leads you. I guess it's led me to, to here and <laughs> the yeah. things I do now. That's, uh, that's really fascinating, actually. So a little bit more about the help desk specifically, okay? Sure. So how would you say that the nature of the help desk course at BHS has evolved over the years that you've been teaching it? Right. Um, is it critically more in depth or more difficult in terms of what you were teaching with students to do or you know experiment right. with? So you know, I I say with my course, um, essentially the the content really honestly varies from year to year, and I have to say that. Um, you know, when I started, I, I definitely knew about the help desk program and I knew about Burlington. So, you know, I'm not sure if students realize this, but um, Burlington is pretty renowned. Like, I, not even in, in the state, I'd say really nationwide and uh, maybe even elsewhere. Um, and I think a lot of that is um, from the one to one iPad program, you know, which started in 2011. And, uh, you know, had known about it, had known about the help desk program, which uh, was unique, still is somewhat unique in terms of like having students really um, 
do a lot of work in setting up technology, helping with technology. So um, as I understand it from um, Dennis Volano, who's um, you know, one of the directors of technology um, in Burlington, uh, it was out of necessity <laughs> because the staff was really small in terms of the IT staff. So they figured, okay, we'll, we'll get students to help us because it's free labor, <laughs> to be blunt. <laughs> and uh, so essentially, uh, you know, it was free labor, but I think it was kind of uh, uh, great for the students as well, just to right, kind of yeah. like really dive in um, hands-on and kind of get the program off the ground. Yeah. And so I think um, as the uh, evolution of it has kind of gone, you know, in the really kind of short seven or eight years, um, students are more tech savvy, I think. I think, you know, teachers, administrators, um, people know more definitely about technology. So we still do the general kind of help desk type things like resetting passwords and um, of course, yeah. you know, helping people update things. But um, I think one of the things I saw right off the bat was there were just some students that were way beyond my level, frankly, <laughs> in terms of just like programming yeah. or knowing things about technology. And so it just became this thing where it's like, I almost have to like step up my game and kind of like introduce a lot of different things that aren't just kind of the typical tech support type stuff, which, yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, we don't get the volume that, as I understand it, uh, that, that the help desk got in the past. So yeah, that's why I think we've explored other things, um, you know, with like a, a drone project that we have. Um, we've wow. done more kind of like Impressive. coding type things. Um, I had a student that was interested in doing like video production um, from a couple of years ago. So um, Catherine Ellis was, was a student that wanted to learn more about um, just producing videos and things like that. And I think that's something that she might actually be studying in college now. So um, it's great to have the resources and the people and obviously, you know, the students that um, really drive the program. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a BHS student myself, I can tell you that the help desk is easily like a student favorite. Oh, well, thank so you. <laughs> that if you would like to know that, a bit of encouragement. Um, but uh, as I'm sure you know, Apple has been the main provider of technology in the school since 2012. And right. How has this switch affected the uh, accessibility of good and simple technology at our school? And how has the growth of the technology, among many others, such as drones, overall affected the school environment? Um, yeah, so I'll try to kind of give my um, impressions of it. So, uh, you know, I think Apple's been a great partner. And, um, you know, I think the iPad, when it came out, um, it was pretty revolutionary in that it was, you know, relatively low cost, could do a lot of things that a computer could do. And um, I think, you know, there's still things about it that, that are great. Um, as you and I guess others know, we did kind of an, an experiment <laughs> with trying to switch the Chromebooks being mm -hmm. like a Google um, district and, um, you know, essentially, I guess, needing a keyboard on a device. Um, when not so great. Part of it was because that um, the Chromebooks that we got, um, frankly, just I don't know. They had a lot of issues, and I don't know. I am not. That's not to say that that's universal across Chromebooks, but we just kind of had some bad luck with that. So you know, the level of um, support to deal with those sorts of issues and repairs, it just it created more work for us, frankly. And okay. I think people also sort of miss the iPad. Um, so you know, whether it's like notability is certain apps that I think are just better for certain things like iMovie or whatever. Right, yeah. Um, you couldn't really do those same things on a Chromebook. So kind of made the switch back. And then, um, as you and many other students know, I'd say even when I first started here, a lot of students were doing BYOD or bring your own device. So I saw like a lot of students with laptops. And you know, I probably tend to use my MacBook Pro more than anything else because I do a variety of things. And um, it does almost everything that I need you know, in that device. So I can sort of see where students kind of went there and, you know, don't want to go into like a, a major tangent <laughs> yeah. kind of with like the Wi-Fi yeah. issues and whatnot. But you know about all of that. Oh, and yeah. uh, so, yeah, the, you know, if we want to cover that, the <laughs> yeah. controversies we can. Yeah. But, um, but you know, it, it, it's a tough job that our IT department has to go through you know, because they, yeah. they're in charge of um, making sure things are secure and that the devices that should be on the network are on the network. But I can see that possibly evolving. I mean, I think people are very open-minded about figuring out, like, well, what would be the next step, and you know, how are we going to kind of accommodate the students' needs, the teachers' needs, you know, in terms of like what technology um, we'll have. I think I kind of rambled. I'm not sure if I answered all of your questions, but <laughs> no, that was that was a good answer. So I guess on a more broad scale, uh, how do you see technology continuing to impact the world? Uh, for the next decade or so, do you think it'll be more of a, like uh, more beneficial, or do you think it'll be harmful for society? <sighs> yeah, that's a really good one. I mean, essentially, 
I mean, I guess it's here, whether we like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just trying to figure out the ways to make it better. Um, you know, so um, I, I think it's one of those things that everybody just probably needs to learn some things about, you know. So um, social media, I think, has probably taken a lot of heat um, <laughs> and yeah, probably for good reason, easily. you know, in terms of like uh, how that information of users has been abused, you know, frankly, sometimes, you know, not. Um, being secured, uh, you know, things being leaked and things like and that, like that. Um, so I think people just have to kind of learn about those things. Um, you know, one thing that I tell folks, and you guys are kind of young at this point, but like passwords are, frankly, not great sometimes, especially if you just use one password for everything. So you really have I'm to eventually, at some point in your life, I, I, I've been doing this for a couple of years, like use a password manager or something like that. Um, so one password is a program that I use. There's another program called LastPass. There are, you know, several others. So if you have something that kind of uh, has all of your passwords um, stored and you just kind of use that program to put in like a master password, have that kind of fill in things on forums or sites you use, probably more secure because if one site gets hacked, um, that doesn't mean like they're going to try and get into your bank account yeah. or like, you know, um, some other vendors or whatever, Amazon, you know, that, that you may use because that, that was kind of my wake up call <laughs> when yeah. I was, uh, well not hacked, but I think there was a LinkedIn um, you know, password leak and then someone tried to buy a bunch of PlayStation and iTunes cards. <laughs> that might Best be Buy. a bit of a red flag, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's just things like that, but there are just like a lot of other things. I think for you all, you know, as young people, um, you know, I'm not, not saying like, okay, everyone needs to go into some sort of STEM profession or field, but you know, the jobs are definitely there. Um, even if you don't, um, I think knowing a little bit about the technology will help you down the line and just kind of understanding um, how it can affect whatever within your job because, you know, just about every job you're going to be using technology in some ways. And we're going to have, uh, or we're kind of doing this innovation pathways thing where we're going to try to bring more students to, you know, at least study computer science and you just never know where your path will lead. But I think studying that is a topic probably isn't going to hurt your career or like kind of pigeonhole you into something like I think it can lead to many different careers that are associated with you know computer science mm -hmm. or technology. All right Mr. Wong thanks for some of the valuable insight you provided with us and uh, sure, we look welcome. forward to speaking with you some more. Great thanks for having me. Of course. I am back with Mr. Wong and we're about to play a round or two of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch right. and I know I, what I love about this new one is that they added an old Courses, right, um, right. Like this one is from the N64. Okay. And it looks beautiful. Yeah, because honestly, I, I don't know fully kind of the history of like all the different, um, you know, versions of it. Right. But, you know, I've brought kind of like uh, retro consoles in and people have kind of like seen, um, you know, what those look like. Right, and, yeah. Uh, you know, how the games look. And I'm terrible at doing the drifting track. <laughs> It's also just as it's just hard to drift with this specific controller. Right, I'm right. usually used to using like a pro controller or both Joy Cons okay. together, but um, we got it's we, we can make do with these Joy Cons. It's it's I the one thing about the Joy Cons that I kind of complain about is that uh -huh. like they're small and like I understand that it's supposed to be portable, yeah. but at the same time it's hard to play with them. Yeah in the first place. Right. So it's just like, I don't know. It just seems like, like even in situations like this, it's like, oh, grab a Joy-Con. It's like, yeah, that's perfect if you like, you know, it, it, it's perfect if like you're, you have like smaller hands or something, but yeah. like, oh, it's just one of those things. I just banana myself. That was not a good move. <laughs> I hate when so like you that. don't uh, usually just play like one person versus one person instead of like having the other uh, kind of computer controlled. Like, yes, uh, okay. usually what I like to do is I when uh, I play with like my friends or someone else, I will usually like to do like whoever's playing. I don't really like including the computers because okay. in my experience, when you play against computers with a friend, you just both kind of feel like if the computers win, you're both just like, well, that was yeah, that could have been avoided, you know? It's right, just right. like so. And I know I brought um, like the last uh, day before uh, winter vacation. I brought in my N64. Okay. And I brought um, what did I bring? I brought Mario Kart, Smash Bros, and like Banjo Kazooie. And it was awesome because we. Yeah, I just had like a ton of people like coming up. It was like, oh, let's play. And it's like it was yeah. just super fun. And like right. I think that playing games like this 
is a really good like just the, this is Nick's pro tips if you want to bond with someone Mario Kart <laughs> don't play Mario Party you will get angry at each other okay you've clearly smoked me this is not good <laughs> I don't want to say that I did <laughs> it's just a lot of my friends will even say is that like I've gotten too good at this game gotcha yeah it's a problem okay. but like it's just one of those things I've learned what works like for yes. me personally right so like I'm just like oh like I know I'm good at acceleration characters and like drifting and finding my things so like right, I yeah. definitely this is where I would have felt better if I could have at least beaten some of the computer you know racers. oh <laughs> yeah that's true I didn't even think of that that's, that's true. okay <laughs> it's all good I but. if there is I should look into it yeah so it <laughs> packs I think they I don't know if they were like super oh, well. official <laughs> my bad um, <laughs> competitions but they yeah. did have them I don't know if you kind of check that out um, but I should honestly because yeah I, the, you were pretty I good from what I could see. So, I appreciate yeah. that. A lot of my <laughs> friends are just like, you are too good. And I'm like, yeah. it's a problem. <laughs> Interesting. But Maybe yes. like, you know, the last day of school, we'll have like a tournament or something That'd and be awesome. see how you do. Last but day of internship. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Yeah. But, well, I guess we have to do the showcase on the last day, but maybe the right, right, second to last yeah. day, as long as you're ready for your yeah. showcase. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Anyway, all, all right. right. So well, I don't know if this can be interesting to people that watch this and listen to us, but yeah, I, th I definitely <laughs> thought it was, I definitely thought it was interesting. So I want to thank you for coming on playing all right. a Mario Kart with me, sure, and for and letting then us conversing and hanging out. So yeah. cool, it was awesome. So thank you. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. Lastly, on the show tonight is the time you have all been waiting for, <laughs> Mr. Wong's solo performance from a hit that he and his band produced together. Uh, as great of technology teacher he has been. Let's see what musical enjoyment he can provide us. May the good Lord be with you down every road you roam. And may sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home. When you grow to be old, dignified and true And do unto others as you'd have done to you Be courageous and be brave And in my heart you'll always stay forever young Forever young May good fortune be with you May your guiding light be strong Build a stairway to heaven With a prince or a vagabond And may you never love in vain Cause in my heart You'll always remain forever 